Boxing is the one sport in which you can lose every minute of the contest and still come out with the victory. The one sport where you can hit a 100 run home run in the ninth inning to win the game. That's why we watch. A fighter is never truly out of the fight until that final bell rings. We also watch to root for the underdog. The guy who supposedly has no shot to win but shocks the world by fighting that perfect fight or landing that one big shot. Kostyat Zayu entered his fight with Vince Phillips as a huge favorite. He was undefeated, held the IBF junior welterweight title and had huge knockout power. Phillips pressured Zayu and the two engaged in many notable exchanges. The fight was toe to toe and extremely close entering the ninth round, when just over a minute in, Phillips landed the shots that rocked, hurt and ultimately stopped Zayu's undefeated streak. Phillips forced Zayu along the ropes and unleashed hell. He landed several clean, hard shots that had his opponent out on his feet. Nothing was holding him up but the ropes and the stoppage was totally justified. Vince, pumping the jab, trying to get his head and shoulders going so he can get into a boxing rhythm. So he lands a hard right hand inside. A very good right hand. This is working. Turn. Right back. Less, warning Vince Phillips about low blows. Oh, that's a good shot by Phillips. Oh, a very good exchange in the middle of the ring. Better than one. to continue as you can see the cut is over his eye under the brow a very precarious place and it's going to bleed into his eye Roy hard right hand by Phillips good right hand counter by Sue Sue takes a left hook and Sue is still wobbly as Phillips goes after it Vince Phillips on the verge of a big upset here Sue is out on his feet Few people had even heard of Lehman Brewster, much less gave him a shot, when he traveled to Germany to challenge Vladimir Klitschko for the vacant WBO heavyweight championship and after 4 rounds it didn't appear that we would ever hear from him again. Vladimir unleashed a hellacious assault on Brewster culminating in a 4th round knockdown but Brewster was able to withstand the assault, leaving Vladimir seemingly out of gas in the 5th. Brewster began backing up the bigger man with hard shots and forced a standing 8 count when he battered his foe along the ropes. Klitschko was out on his feet and collapsed to the canvas after the bell for round 5 prompting the referee to stop the fight.
Lennox Lewis entered his 2001 fight with American challenger Hassim Rahman as a heavy favorite. He was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, having won that honor two years previous by defeating Evander Holyfield. Hassim Rahman, on the other hand, seemed to be heading in the opposite direction. His only real win of note had come against the late future champion Corey Sanders. But he had also been knocked out by heavy punches to Arendo Leg Maskeev. As the fight began it appeared as if Lewis wasn't in the best shape of his career, he would later admit to not taking Rahman seriously enough. And in the fifth round Rahman landed a monster right hand against Lewis when he was on the ropes. Hasim Rahman had pulled one of the biggest upsets in history and had secured the undisputed heavyweight championship. Well, Lewis has got to keep that left hand up a little higher because Rockman is still looking for the right. Looking for that lucky right hand shot. Well, that's the one as we've said on so many occasions. See, there's the right hand that I was telling you about. Rockman just caught him with the right hand. It well, Rockman has a terrific record in oh, terms of the knockouts. Go. There was a good combination by Lewis. That was a nice left uppercut right hand. And Lewis is trying to confuse Lennox Lewis. He's actually trying to... There's another shot. After he takes these kind of punishment, punishing shots, the uppercut on that eye, that left eye. Good jab by Lewis, and he looks a lot stronger in this round. Oh, uppercut by the champion. Rachman in a little bit of trouble. To be fair yeah. to him, he came back, and that right hand of his has come yeah, yeah. in. He a worst great challenger he is. Rachman said that he's going to make this war. My hair all wet, too. <laughs> Where did you leave it? <laughs> Caught with. Oh. Oh. oh, he's got him! He's got hey. him! He hey. got Kennis and he's got him! It, is it Oliver McCall all over again? Yes. It is! Yes. And Lewis has gone! Lewis has gone! It's another upset of immense proportions! Unbelievable. This, this has been filled as thunder in Africa! And the thunder and the lightning! In heavyweight history there was no bigger upset than this one. James Douglas entered the ringer underdog for the fight in Tokyo in 1990. Tyson was the undisputed heavyweight champion, an undefeated knockout machine who beat most guys before they stepped into the ring. Nobody, but gamblers looking to make a historic payday, gave Douglas any sort of chance to beat Iron Mike. Douglas was winning the fight when in the 8th round he was dropped by a vicious Tyson uppercut. He rose by the count of nine, a fact that remains highly disputed to this day. Many have argued, including Tyson promoter Don King, that the count went well over nine seconds and the fight should have ended in the tenth round that a badly beaten up Tyson finally succumbed to the pressure. Douglas landed a huge uppercut that staggered the champ, following by several punches while Tyson was reeling that deposited him on the mat. He would not beat the count, making this one of the if not the biggest upsets in boxing history. That, uh, you know, I think sometimes you get too close to a fighter and you believe things that uh, the head's coming to you. saw Mike's head come right in the cheek there of Buster Douglas. You see the closing seconds of this, the first one. Wow! With the right hand is Buster Douglas. And Mike comes right back and answers it with a wild left hand of his own. Mike comes through, leans to the right, and then throws that Mike at any time, lands that big shot. That's the exciting thing. You're talking about Octavio Miran. Oh, an uppercut got through that time by Buster. Look at that here. Let's see how it goes here in round three. Mike looks like he's got the adrenaline flow going a bit better. And Buster Douglas has landed over 50 punches, and Tyson's landed only 16 the second round in favor of Buster Douglas. See Mike much more ground, land that big left hook and there he goes head hunting with the right hand and that, this is his night and all of that sort of stuff but of course one big shot from hand behind it. Let's see if he can get back to that. Oh instead Mike lands. Um, he's got it back together in the late portion here. Raising left hand. That all night. Oh that's a nice uppercut that time. The drops Buster Douglas. The count's up to two and it's up to seven and eight. And here it is at nine, is he gonna get up? Yes, he does! Cut from Mike Tyson that eventually catches him, and there it is, look at that. It's a clean right uppercut. Look at these shots, just loading up by Mike. They're not intimidated, he wants to keep it going. Mike actually has busted, landing these. Oh, nice uppercut by Buster Douglas! Look at this, he's knocked down for the first time in his career! Mike Tyson!
Tyson hits the canvas. He's in big trouble. He's he not going to make it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Buster Douglas. Muhammad Ali entered the fight with Foreman. After Big George had just blasted out undefeated heavyweight champion Joe Frazier in two rounds and did the same to Ken Norton. Ali, many felt, would struggle with Foreman's size and power. Most expected him to try and stay outside and outbox the bigger man, using his speed and reflexes to avoid George's power. But that's not how it went down. Ali was very aggressive early in the fight, fighting, rather than boxing Foreman. Starting in the second round. He would sit back on the ropes and allow Foreman to unload. Many of the shots were deflected or blocked. The strategy, later called rope a dope exhausted Foreman. He expended so much energy and barely landed anything damaging to Ali. He was primed for a major fall, and that's what happened when Ali dropped him and stopped him in the 8th round. It was a stunning upset, especially given how it went down. Foreman moving slow, trying to stalk his man. Ali looks good. Drop that left hook. Muhammad Ali. That's Ali on your right. Foreman on the left. A wild left hand thrown by George Foreman. Taken on the side of the head of him. With his face to you. Ali to the left. Ali tries to tie him up. He's leaning on Foreman. Foreman with a vicious uppercut. Misses. Ticket it for the head of Ali. Ali stands. Foreman sat down all the way. Ali with a back up against the rope. He's talking to Foreman still. Ali tries to tie him up. 30 seconds left in round two. Look at Ali, continues to talk and talk. Definitely serious, tremendous combination by Muhammad Ali. So George Foreman backing Ali to the ropes. There's a vicious left hook to the body. Misses the left again, the right to the left the ring. A right hand lead by Foreman this time. Another right hand. A good right hand taken on the for Muhammad Ali upstairs anyway. Careful, careful, careful. Here's some real good shots to the body oh, thrown by Foreman. all depend how you've been trained for him. And he's fighting smart, real smart. Straight left and a good right hand taken on the side of the head. The left foot, right hand and hang on. George Foreman. Very even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. It's a combination. 